हेलो एवरीबडी वेलकम बैक टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल नॉलेज विद नंदिनी This video is in continuation with the talks on the washing area and the activities which take place there which we've already completed. We spoke so far on initial rinsing or pre-cleaning preferably at the point of use the internal design furniture and receipt and sorting of sets in the washing area. Today I want to speak about the actual cleaning after the checking and sorting. I want to specify again that cleaning is the physical removal of microorganisms and soil by mechanical and manual means. It reduces the number of microorganisms but by washing off not by killing. Sterilization can never be achieved without proper cleaning. Today we will take up manual cleaning so we can go a little more thoroughly into it. As we said before, manual cleaning is the physical removal of visible soil from an item to render it safe for handling or further processing or as a final cleaning without any me mechanical assistance. In manual cleaning, the two most important components are friction and fluidics. Friction is rubbing or scrubbing the soiled area with a brush. This is an old and dependable method. Fluidics is fluid under pressure and that is used to remove soil and debris from surfaces or internal channels after brushing and also when the de design of the equipment does not allow passage of a brush through a channel. Let's start at the beginning. The process begins with point of use cleaning. We said earlier in the surgical suit or in the uh, wards and user departments as the case may be. Gross soil should be wiped from the instruments and lumen should be flushed with sterile water even during the surgical procedure and definitely after the surgical procedure. Any soil left on the instruments should not be allowed to dry. Using a pre-cleaning spray to keep blood and proteinaceous substances from drying on the instruments or covering the instruments with a lint-free cloth that is moistened with water or immerse the instruments in the diluted enzymatic solution before being transported to the decontamination area of the CSSD is a good idea. Keeping the soil instruments moist is very important for proper cleaning and it takes less time to scrub later. I would like to give some important facts on cleaning, particularly those pertaining to common mistakes which I have witnessed myself. Firstly, many hospitals confuse cleaning agents with disinfectants, glutaraldehyde, OPA, hypochlorite solutions, iodine preparations are not cleaning agents. Only enzymes or detergents or combinations of these can be used. Liquid soaps and soaps are also cleaning agents but they are not meant for instruments or medical devices. I have see, also seen catheters and other devices simply dipped into hyposolution or glutaraldehyde when the procedure is over. Then they are rinsed and used. They have never been cleaned. Some other hospitals are not provided with cleaning solutions. So they only use water to clean. All this is totally wrong. Proper cleaning agents and methods are the most important step in proper sterilization. That's why I always say that cleaning for sterilization should be done only in the CSSD. If it is done anywhere else, 
it should be under the guidelines and supervision of the CSSD staff. Manual cleaning is the oldest method of cleaning medical instruments. It is used frequently in hospitals and there are some situations in which it has to be compulsorily used. For example, for preliminary rinsing of the instruments to remove gross dirt. Manual cleaning has the advantage of flexibility in that any kind of instrument can be cleaned. It has the drawback, however, that the cleanliness of the instrument will differ from worker to worker since each person will vary in technique to some extent. It exposes also the healthcare worker to body fluids more than in machine cleaning because they would spend more time in contact with the, with the soiled instruments and often aerosols are, clean, are created. As I said before, usually the first step in any cleaning process is manual cleaning. It removes most of the soil from the instruments but cannot remove small particles that are found in hinges, textured surfaces and other hard to reach parts of the instruments. For this, ultrasonic cleaning provides a solution that is the next essential step in reprocessing instruments safely. We know by now that the manual method is not the most desirable one due to splashing which harms the operator and it also depends on the operator's competence. However, I will give you the situations in which it is mandatory. First we already discussed is the initial rinse or cleaning. Whether it is done in the user department or in the CSSD, this has to be done manually usually with ordinary tap water. For the safety of the operators, the instruments can be dipped directly as I said before with the gross dirt in diluted enzymatic solution. But this should be made up exactly as per instructions of the enzymatic solution manufacturer. The solution needs to be discarded before transport. Please don't try to transport it with the solution because it will create splashes. Okay. Bloodied instruments cannot be put directly into the ultrasonic machine or the washer disinfector except if a special cycle exists for the same in the washer disinfector. Secondly, some de delicate and micro instruments are not recommended by manufacturers to be washed mechanically. So they also need to be hand or manually washed. Thirdly, containers, basins and bowls can be washed manually and they have no joints and do not need to be put in a machine. Next, there are non-immersible devices. That is, they cannot be soaked in water. Non-immersible means they cannot be immersed or soaked. These are power instruments sometimes like motorized drills and saws. In such cases, manual cleaning is required. Usually for these instruments, we use the original equipment manufacturer that is known as OEM instructions. In the absence of the instructions, we can wipe the surface of the item with a damp mop or clean soft cloth soaked in a diluted cleaning agent and then we can wipe it again with a cloth soaked in uh, treated water like distilled water or RO water. Do not allow water to enter inside and the instruments, the instrument, the power drill can be cleaned and lubricated inside with special oils available for this purpose. They are not oils really, they are water based lubricants. Next, uh, where we use manual cleaning is, if there are any remnants of soil or stains when we are sorting the instruments, then we normally brush it manually before putting into the machine. If you notice these stains when the sets are brought and the person delivering is still waiting, you can kindly return the set as, I, as otherwise the user department would tend to dry and send such kind of instruments. 
and dried stains are not easy to remove. But once you have accept, accepted these, please scrub them off with a brush. Because machines are designed for standard cycles and these would not come off during a standard cycle. No grumbling allowed. Return or remove. Re return the item or remove the stain before putting it in an automatic machine. That's all. Lastly, I think when the, the hospital does not have any mechanical means like an ultrasonic machine or washer disinfector, that is when we have to do manual cleaning. Of course, there could be more reasons you can think of, but follow the protocols of your department. For manual cleaning, it would be best to first soak the instruments in a lukewarm water cleaning agent bath for at least 10 minutes. The duration of the soak can be increased in case of dried soil and also as time permits. As we said before, enzymatic detergents are preferred as they break up organic soil readily and rapidly than only using detergents. Manual cleaning requires either a two-bay sink or a three-bay sink. Each bay plays a role in the cleaning process. The first sink contains the cleaning solution, which may be, as we said before, an enzymatic or detergent solution or a combination. Temperatures used should be lukewarm to touch, neither hot or cold, or as specified by the cleaning agent manufacturer. High temperatures result in coagulation of proteins and very low temperatures do not allow the re removal of minerals or fatty deposits. I think we all know instruments should be kept wide open. We need to brush the instruments with a medium soft brush, preferably with nylon bristles while it is in the soak path. In the case of tube devices like endoscopes or in case of immersible hand pieces, the insides that is tubes, lumens, channels should be brushed out as well. Care should be taken to use brushes recommended by the manufacturer to avoid damaging the instrument. Again, this also I guess you know, brushing must be done under the surface of the soap bath with brush strokes away from the body to avoid exposure to sprays from the brush. Remove the instrument from the bath only to inspect its cleanliness. This will remove most or all of the soil on the instrument. After we find it is clean, the instrument must be rinsed again with clean water and if difficult to remove soil still remains on the instrument, we have to give it another enzyme soap, again followed by brushing and again followed by rinsing. Clean detergent solution must be used for each cleaning session to, be, to make sure that the soil that was removed from the instrument or set does not deposit on the next instrument, creating a chance for cross infection. At the least, change the bath when it looks visibly dirty. Though the guidelines advise that scrubbing should be done under water, sometimes if it's not possible, then you have to brush very carefully and use very strictly PPE as described in my earlier talks and in all the guidelines as well. Basically, you need a cap, mask, goggles or a face shield, overalls which cover your scrub suit, thicker gloves and safety shoes in the washing area. I have seen CSSDs where PPE was provided but not used by the staff as they felt uncomfortable. I hope you have been provided with good quality breathable PPE or please request for the same. Also, it is mandatory to have air conditioning in this area. Have a series of proper brushes which are easily available in the market for instrument cleaning as well as pipe cleaner type of brushes for lumened items. 
please do not use one shoe polishing brush or nail brushes or a brushes with the bristles all gone like the hair on a bald person's head okay the brush needs to be cleaned and decontaminated daily also abrasive cleaning agents abrasive means powders and me- metal brushes should be used very rarely reusable brushes should themselves be cleaned and disinfected these should be discarded when the bristles are worn out even slightly otherwise the cleaning won't be proper items with lumen like suction tubes and scopes should be soaked properly and completely immersed or you can also put them in vertical soak cylinders so that the lumen is completely filled all the interior surfaces should come in contact with the cleaning agent without having any air bubbles if cleaning a lumened item a brush or flushing with water pressurized water may be used to loosen soils the pre and post rinse in case of lumen items is very important as one cannot really see inside the lumen while flushing with water the other end should be immersed in water to prevent aerosol formation ortho instruments like curettes reamers and bone rongers may have large amounts of bone pieces and tissue stuck to them they may not get cleaned in the routine cycle or in the machine so they can be brushed lightly with a s- soft brush to remove all these particles before putting in the machine coming to the second sh- sink it has taps water guns with different size nozzles and a flexible shower head we already spoke this spoke about this in the furnitures and fixtures uh, video these have ordinary tap water running through them it also should have a drain which can be closed so that the sink can be filled for proper contact with what of water with all the surfaces of the devices rinsing is most important as residues of the cleaning agent or the soil or the other chemicals used in the uh, user departments can retard sterilization and also cause foreign body reactions therefore the manual rinsing should be done 2 3 times before the final rinse where several lumened items of the same size need to be washed together for example needles uh, or cardiac catheters a multi pot flusher can be used i'm not talking about normal hypodermic needles but special procedure needles which need to be reused the third bay or third sink has provisions for rinsing with treated water that is distilled or deionized or ro water if there is no third sink you have only two sinks then you have to make alternate arrangements to have a last rinse of treated water this prevents calcium magnesium and other ions from remaining on instruments and causing spotting it also helps to rinse off pyrogens which may otherwise cause pyrogenic reaction in patients manually cleaned items require lubrication but i recommend lubricating only those which have joints or where the ifu suggests they need to be lubricated water soluble lubricants are recommended so that they are steam penetrable that means the steam can pass through if using any other method of steril sterilization then you have to use the lubricants which are compatible with that particular method of sterilization you have to make sure the lubricant is approved for the type of sterilization method that will be used for complex instruments especially carefully follow the manufacturer's ifu for this carefully check the device for cleanliness before sending it to the assembly section if a soiled instrument is found you have to undergo the whole process again 
This completes manual cleaning. Whether it is for rinsing at the point of use, whether it is used for pre-cleaning or for instruments going for further mechanical cleaning or for final cleaning. Next, we will take up ultrasonic cleaning. Bye till then.